Hello and welcome to the fourth video in our series on scientific writing. In previous videos, we asked ourselves a series of questions that should be answered at different points of our story. In the most recent video, we used the answers to these questions to write the opening of our introduction. In this video, we will do the same for the funnel and the challenge. Recall from part two that the funnel connects the opening and the challenge. The funnel is really part of the opening, but it's useful to think about it as its own story element. The funnel will make up the main body of your introduction. Here are the answers to the questions I gave for the example that we've been following in all of these videos. Now I'm just going to convert them into standalone sentences. If I look at the answers to these questions, they seem to naturally fall into two different topics. So I might think about turning them into two paragraphs. The first paragraph might look like this and the second paragraph like this. You can see that I slightly rewrote some of these sentences to make them sound a little better. Feel free to do that as you're working on the structure of your document, if the inspiration strikes. But don't feel obliged to perfect your sentences at this stage. We will get to that later when editing our document. As before, I'm just going to copy these paragraphs and then add them to my document to replace the questions. Now let's look at the challenge. I convert the answers to the questions into text as follows. Again, I rewrote the first sentence a bit. The second sentence is just terrible, and I'm certain it's not going to appear in the final draft of my paper. But I'm having a mental block right now about how to improve it, so I won't waste my time on that right now. I'm sure I will come up with something when I'm working on this section again later. And let's just take this and put it into our document in the relevant section as well. The funnel has to achieve a few things. The first is that it must build the argument that to make progress on the large problem, you must answer the specific questions in the challenge. The second is that it needs to frame the knowledge gap. It needs to tell the reader what we don't know. This creates unexpectedness and creates curiosity. Let's check whether I did a good job at this in my example. If I look at my challenge, I can see that in order to build the argument that my challenge should be addressed, I should be a little bit more careful with the words that I'm using. So I'll just rewrite this slightly. Now it becomes a bit more clear that it's somehow really difficult to deal with these higher dimensional systems. So I'm going to add a note to myself that I need to address this at this point of the introduction. What about framing the knowledge gap? I haven't really made it clear that it doesn't seem like anyone has looked at these higher dimensional systems yet. So I'll just add a note to myself that I should also talk about that at this point of the introduction. Notice that I'm just making notes to myself rather than writing what needs to be written. Sometimes when I'm focusing on the structure of a document, I find it difficult to think about specific wording. So I just leave it till later for when inspiration strikes. When it comes to the funnel, there are two ways that you can fail. The first is failing to define a problem, and the second is to offer a solution before defining the problem. In my example, if I left these sections out, we would be presenting a solution, but it won't be obvious to the reader what problem we're trying to solve. Somewhat less bad would have been to put the solution first and then explain the problem. This sounds silly to do, but I find it surprisingly common to the reader, this can be equally as frustrating if they get stuck at this point and don't read on further. To the person writing the paper, it might seem that the problem is implied by the solution. But trust me on this one, to the reader, it is not obvious, and they will be so, so grateful to you if you make explicit what the problem is before giving the solution. Okay, now it's your turn to do an exercise. You can follow my examples, but do this for your own research project. Flesh out the answers to the question, what do we need to understand the situation to follow the story, into a couple of paragraphs. In doing so, you will write the background paragraphs of your paper or essay. And a few things to keep in mind. Focus on the structure. The writing does not need to be perfect. As I've said before, we're going to do more editing later. Make sure that you frame the problem. Don't offer a solution before you define the problem. And adding notes to your future self is a good way to define the structure, 
especially if you can't really think of the right wording at this point in time. So you can pause this video and work on the exercise for about 10 minutes. When it comes to the challenge, there are also two ways that you can fail. A challenge isn't going to be effective if it doesn't concretely state the question, or if it gives the reader the wrong impression as to what the question is. Another common mistake is to just say we did why without saying what we were trying to learn by doing it. And I just want to reiterate this point again because it's really important. The question might seem obvious to you, but no reader knows as much about your work as you do. So let's go back to our example and see how we did. We did a pretty good job at concretely stating the question. The question is, can we use an existing 1D theory to model higher dimensional systems? What about the second possible way to fail? Did we say why we were doing something? We could be a little bit more clear about it, so let's give it a little bit more context at the beginning of this paragraph. And now it's time for the second exercise. I'd like you to flesh out the answers to the question, what specific questions do you propose to answer, into a couple of paragraphs. In doing so, you will write the challenge paragraphs of your paper or essay. And a few things to keep in mind. As before, focus on the structure. The writing does not need to be perfect. And don't simply say what you did without saying why. So you can pause the video now and work on the exercise for 10 minutes. If you've been doing these exercises, by now you should have something that resembles an introduction. Now, of course, it's not going to be perfect yet. It has some good structure, but it'll need some more work. It'll need a bit more writing as well as rewriting. We'll need to flesh out some parts, condense some others. We'll need to work on the paragraph and sentence structure, and also using the right words and making sure everything flows together. You will get to all of that in upcoming videos. But for now, you should be really proud of what you've achieved, a well-structured introduction. So let's summarize what we've learned so far. The funnel is the main body of the introduction. It connects the opening and the challenge, and it's used to define the knowledge gap. The challenge should state concretely what will be done. And in these first stages of writing, it's better to focus on the structure. Real editing will come later. In the next video, we will look at strategies for writing the action. See you next time.